All right, so <laughs> I got another uh, artist edition here. I was going through my closet, and for some reason, I completely forgot I got this. Got this about six months ago, maybe seven or eight months. Um, it is the Sam Keith artist edition, also unwrapped. So I'm going to open this up for you guys so you can see it. This is my first time seeing this. Um, I've seen images on Google of it. And I was already sold. As soon as I saw they had the uh, the darker image pages in it, um, which, I mean, I, I probably actually traced a few of those pages when I was a, a young teen. Um, you know, I was sold. So, yeah, let's check this out. Uh, fan of Sam Keith. I, to me, this is my personal sweet spot for Sam. Right after uh, all those Marvel covers, he jumped on the Max and just, you know, Kicked a lot of butt, so let's go and open this up. Um, geez, I really want to be careful open this thing. Alright. Again, sorry for the shaky cam. Um, I have to prop everything on my desk because it, the, these artist editions are so big that even with the... Uh, the tripod extended all the way out. It doesn't. It doesn't get enough visible area. So I'm zoomed out. I'm as high as it goes, and it's just enough to get almost to the bottom of this the sucker. So let's go ahead and go through this guy now. Um, sweet. Yeah, I got nothing but love for Sam. Sam. Sam's work is uh, just different enough. Just different enough. Man. <clears throat> so much white out. So much white out. I love it. And, and one, one of my favorite things about seeing all of this stuff is because uh, as a young and dumb artist, as I was, now I'm just old and dumb. Uh, as a young and dumb artist, I used to ink around all this stuff. Like if I wanted to do this effect, I would actually come in with a black marker and, and figure out ways to separate this stuff. Um... Man, like, I really wish this kind of information was available back in the day because it would have saved time and looked better. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> Darker image. Man, I love these pages. When this book came out, when this book came out, oh, man, I still remember it. Still remember it. So awesome. Yeah, this guy's got a he's got the quarantine body going on. Before it was cool. Yeah, these pages were these pages were so they were so awesome. Um, what's weird is a lot of this correctional fluid, this whiteout, right? He's probably using pro white. It kind of looks it, it's so opaque and it's held up for so good on these originals. Probably pro white. Um, Maybe he's just using it here before he hits it over here for these lines, the actual details. I'm not really sure. <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Good to know. All this hair was white out, sort of like uh, what Frank Miller would do with the characters. He would just do like the basic silhouette of the area that needed to be white, and then he'd come in with white and do a lot of the rendering that way. So that's good to know. Uh, some interesting patterns here. So, so it's got the captain, some weird, some captain with like the hand pointing, like look this way. I don't know, man. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. This stuff's just so. This stuff makes you. If you're an artist and looking at this doesn't make you want to draw, then find another profession. This stuff's awesome. I always felt like this looked like a McFarlane face in a weird way. I don't know what it is about it. Todd used to push the brows and, and uh, you know, the, the highlights on the noses and stuff. He used to make everything kind of protrude, you know? I always felt like this. This always felt like a very McFarlane-looking character to me. I spent many, many hours looking at these. Probably the original seven or eight, the first seven or eight issues of the Max. 
when I was trying to discover kind of what I wanted to do uh, as an artist. Oh man, he did some big whiteout right here. I wonder what happened. Yeah, he he killed a lot of detail on that nose right there. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. Um, obviously, he works very messy too. So, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> he whited out the whole nose, so apparently he he just wanted the eyes, but there was a nose illustrated here that he whited out. Um, so another thing I like about these artist editions is they're just uh, they're just photo, just photos of the page, so you get to see the weird scribbles and the mess and everything else. You know, these aren't color corrected. You get to see the blue lines that were laid down beforehand. Kind of reminds you as an artist that nobody's perfect, you know? Yeah, this stuff's great, man. Yeah, so, see, when I see stuff like this, it makes me want to design, like, these insane layouts, you know? Like, these crazy-looking pages. Yeah, that stuff's just fun. Yeah, back in the day... You know, there's some. This is insanity here too. I, I don't really, even when I was when I was a kid, I didn't really understand why so many page, why so many panels to illustrate. Literally, one of the is is running from Max and jumps into a dumpster. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's cool that I mean, it's cool that he did that, but it just. I would have rather seen this designed like this, if that makes sense. Yeah, so badass too. Um, there, there was a there was a chase figure from McFarland. He did a Max figure, and there was one with the black is's and the white is's, those little creatures. And um, a buddy of mine had both. I think he, I think he ended up grabbing both. But that was like it, that we. Used, that's I think that's when we became toy hunters, uh, hitting up the Toys R Us, is trying to like be there on days of shipment when they're putting stuff out. Me and my friends, bunch of nerds. Yeah. So this stuff here, this is cool too. So this here, I'm gonna tell you how I think that he did this here. I don't think this was a brush. I don't think this was a pen. Um, if you're to take let me see if I got one right here. I do. Um, only because I've done this. I've done this before, just messing around. So you got these, the Black Magic Ink. This is a T100. This is actually discontinued now. But these um, syringes they come with, right? Um, there is ink in it. You can actually draw with it. And this is the kind of line that you'll get. These super inconsistent, very thin or very thick, depending on squeegeeing it out as you're going, right? And uh, the way that this line looks in this photo, I am I would bet money that's exactly what he did. I think he used one of these squeegees out of this and just drew all this stuff with it. Uh, and that's how you get... Because this is not brush. This is not brush inked right. Like that right there. This is what you get if you're messing with this on a piece of paper. So, confirmed. Confirmed. And I know it's a weird thing, but this is always... I've always wondered because in print this is a hundred percent black as long as, uh, as well as every other line around it. So I was like, it doesn't look like brush because it's so inconsistent and it looks very very cool. So I'm I'm certain now that this was at seeing this full size black and white. I'm certain that's what he used was he just used a uh, you know a, a black magic uh, eyedropper. Uh, right out of the right out of the ink thing. So I wonder how much more he used it for. Even this kind of thing here could have been could have been you know using that. I imagine Sam, with the way that his artwork is, I imagine that he probably has used things like paint brushes and you know broken toothpicks and you know all that kind of shit. I can see I can see him being that type of an artist, you know. 
just whatever works. Even if he had even if even if he had a perfectly good pin sitting next to him, he'd probably do it just for the sake of doing it. Um, this is interesting. It looks like he had the cranium pushed out and he did a lot of correction there. A lot of blue line on this. A lot of blue line in this in this page. Um, something I'm not seeing on these pages is the image paper. So back in the day, the image paper was was a pretty good, pretty good paper to use, and uh, I'm not seeing like image logo. And also this, I wonder if these were drawn. I don't know. Not that it's really important or not. I wonder if these were drawn on a, like a 12 by 18 page. Yeah, these are so fun, man. Yeah, big fan. So again, this is to me sweet spot. So badass. Come on. Yeah. This, so yeah, sweet spot of Sam right here. Um, yeah, I was gonna say this is not a scan. Yeah, this page not scanned from original art. Yeah, they just they just uh, they probably scanned a book and then raised all the color levels to you know the brightness of the colors to a hundred and kept the line art the best they could there's a little bit of the digital rendering in there so um it's still cool to see this big um and that happens sometimes in the artist editions and it's nice they tell you here it's not scanned from the original on the bottom yeah these are some of the pages with man the binding on this is kind of funky um yeah like again if, if you're a big fan of sam this is uh The only thing that would have made this book better is if they also included the scan or uh, uh, photo stats or whatever you want to call it, photographs of the um, the Marvel Comics Presents stuff that he did. Oh, God, it's so good, man. This is just... This paper's very thick. I can't tell sometimes if it's one page or one stuck. So yeah, I think around issue nine, it was after you know Pitt made a guest. Yeah, this is not scanned from the original. Um, Pitt made a Pitt made a guest appearance in the book, and after that, I think I think I stuck around for a couple more books, and then the story got the story started feeling less like an image book and more like a Vertigo book, and that's that's when it lost me. Um, again, design man, these designs are. Just madness. A lot of a lot of Bernie influence, obviously, but um, a whole lot of Sam showing through all that, you know. Yeah, this stuff is fun. Um, good material if you're an artist trying to figure out different ways and new ways to uh, do combined shading and lighting. Um. This works really well with the, the way the shadow is worked right here into the gun going this direction. That works super good. So yeah, again, sorry, shaky cam. I keep looking up. I'm like, God, this thing's like trying to go a little slow on this. Uh, max number five. Jeez, it covers so good. Um, I've always liked this double pager right here. I've always liked this. Yeah, there was a little bit of teeter tottering going on with Sam with this with this uh, around this time of the books. Um, he would, I don't recall. I, I, re I remember not liking this very much. I didn't like this cartoony stuff. I know why they did it for the story, but I didn't like the actual artwork of the, the that stuff. Kind of a Calvin and Hobbes moment. A little bit of Bill Watterson influence, maybe. Um, this is a badass double pager right here too. Always like this one as well. A lot of brushwork, um, a lot of pro quill too. You can see the quill in there. A lot of this stuff. So good. Uh, issue six. I wonder if he just doesn't include the Max book in here as well. 
Uh, it's got a one-page dragon cameo. Um, oddly enough, it looks like Eric's face. It's so weird. It's got this shark dude. I've always... I For all of the Max books, I've never liked this page, and I still don't like it. This bothers me for some reason. This shark bothers me this everything everything around the shark up and down looks fine i've never liked this um this is cool um i do not this book was it i feel like it was pretty consistent too like coming out so Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's it feels way too playful for everything, you know, all the pages that surround it. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, he did, he incorporated a painting and then did some painted panels to make this page here. Um, and this is about where he goes a little vertigo on us. Um, less focus on the very cool anatomical aspects that a lot of us aspiring artists were looking at, and started going more towards the. Uh, cartoony open aspect you know very Bugs Bunny Elmer Fudd sort of thing going on um, yeah that's a this is a scan out of the book that's not an original this is an original scan though yeah this stuff's fun this page was I, I always liked I always liked this page yeah all the rendering Never, never afraid to render uh, Julie here. He, he always, uh, never felt overworked. This is cool too. A lot of Frazetta influence in this painted stuff. A little bit of Bernie, a little bit of Frazetta, a little bit of uh, Sam. This is an awesome panel right here. I really like the way the the lighting leads you to the box that he's sleeping in. Yeah, all right, so let's see what else is in here. Yeah, so it does look like he skipped. They, it doesn't look like they used the pages with Pitt. There's some pages from 23. So it goes, yeah, these are all later pages. So, yeah, it does look like he skipped the Pitt issue in here, uh, which is okay, whatever. Um, Would have been nice, but... Got what you got, right? A lot of whiteout. This is all whiteout detail right here. This is all whiteout detail. Super nice. Super nice. Uh, fun page right here, too. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this is up there. Definitely one of my favorite. This is definitely one of my favorite uh, artist edition books that I own now. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, checking this sucker out. Uh, I I don't recall where I got this from. I did not get this off eBay. I got it from, oh, and of course I don't have it next to me, uh, Bud Planet or something like that. Um, I think I got it for $80 shipped a ways back. Like, like uh, you know, it was, it was earlier COVID months, so when I purchased it and it, and it got here perfect condition and, and all that. So yeah, if you can find it for cover again, yeah, recommend it, man. And sorry again, shaky cam, shakycam.com.